Ah, now I'm not muted. Can you hear me now? All right, thanks guys. Yeah, sorry for uh, the delay. I was playing with this betting module. I don't know why it's not working, to be honest. Um, but as uh, Jim astutely points out, if we bet on baseball, we'll never get into the Hall of Fame. And wouldn't that be a shame? Um, I mean, it, sh it should work. Oh, one second. All right, sorry about that. Uh, the dog required attention. Um, so welcome back to baseball. It is uh, the end of week four <clears throat> of the 2024 season. Don't bother with beer me's. All I've got is water tonight. Well, you could beer me, but I'm, I'll, I'll be drinking water. Uh, Scott, I owe you a, a, a water me. Um, so I see you already, already spent your hard-earned seeds. Um, as you can see, there's the game schedule, uh, but I'll put up the standings uh, just in case you forgot where everyone was. Uh, the last time we were here, well, of course, you've been looking at your team files and stuff, so you, you guys know. Um, but tonight we're going to do the Hops and the Brawlers. Now, I know they both look like basement dwellers, um, but honestly, I don't think they're going to be there long. The Hops maybe might take a little bit longer to battle out of that spot. But uh, <clears throat> so far, after almost a month of baseball, it's, uh, it's been an interesting turn of events. Ohio in second place, uh, displacing the Ravens, uh, whereas usually it's, it's the Ravens in second. And in, as a matter of fact, Chicago wasn't even in first for the, for the first two or three weeks. I think uh, Ohio was, was up there quite, uh, quite solidly. My nomads, for some reason, are in first place with the best record in the league right now. Um, this has happened before a couple seasons ago and we weren't able to maintain it, but we did make the playoffs that year. I think it was 2022. So I was, uh, I was pleased with that. It was a good start that year as well. Calgary Inferno on top of the ML East. Uh, Addy's pretty pleased with that, but the East is a funny division uh, as Brandon and, um, and others can attest to every team in that division is below 500 right now. Um, Brandon, who was on top, is now on a, a six-game losing streak. So it's been a rough, rough go in that division. The uh, the other division has had the the better of the day, particularly the Salts, the surprise Salts, who were decimated through off-season AI trades, and actually more more so actually last season AI trades. Uh, the off-season they did pick up a GM just at the end of uh, spring, though, but. Uh, we had mostly left them alone during the off season. So, um, so yeah, Rico's salts there, uh, 14 and nine, the, uh, Arizona Cowboys, we expect good things from anyway. They're 13 and nine speeders in California, uh, close behind, uh, California's nine and 14. I, I, I don't expect will be the case for, for much longer. Ben's got a pretty good, uh, side there. So it'll be interesting. There's going to be, I mean, it's early in the season. There's gonna be a lot of a lot of switching around and changing uh, of of positions here, uh, but there you go, and uh, uh, it's going to be an exciting, exciting year, especially now that we've got uh, GMs um, for all the teams and GMs in waiting. We've got uh, a few GMs in waiting. Uh, the Discord command does work, um, so now when interested people come on by, we can pop over the disc the Discord. And uh, they can join the Discord right away, as opposed to uh, me getting their email address and sending them a Slack invite. I think Stats Plus migrating to Discord is going to be better. Discord's really the gaming app, um, chat app anyway. Um, Slack was good for a while. Uh, it fit a purpose, but um, I think it's being it's being replaced. It was mostly for businesses anyway, and, and loose associations of people in industries. Uh, it was never really designed with gaming in mind. So this, this has streaming, the discord has streaming built in. We've done 
some like how to streams before on it. Um, and now that uh, stats plus is supporting it through the beta, um, things are looking good. So I haven't updated to the latest beta. There were apparently a couple of reported glitches, um, but I will be doing that soon. All right. So as I announced earlier on the discord, um, the game that we're going to feature tonight is the hops at the brawlers. The hops are the only team that have not been featured in a play by play broadcast that I can tell. I think everyone else has had at least one go. Uh, and some we've started to come around a second time. Uh, it's an interesting matchup. They're both in the basement of their own divisions. But uh, as I said, I don't expect that to, to last. There's the expanded standings though. Um, the Hops have a um, negative 25 run differential, uh, but they're playing above where their Pythagorean has them. Um, yeah, against righties, they're even. They're not so good against lefties so far. Uh, but if you take a look at their their lineup, they've got some decent uh, names. They've got Alex Jeter. They've got Mike Strang, formerly of, of uh, California, rather. Uh, Chris Zahn has had better seasons, but uh, he's he's a decent guy. Uh, they're pitching. David Velez captaining that staff. Um, definitely a worthy pitcher. <clears throat> and uh, I think possibly their, the rest of the rotation maybe needs a little bit of work there. But, uh, you know, Hiku Inui actually isn't that bad. Um, here's where they rank. Relief pitching, second in the league. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the middle of, of several of the infield positions, it's a, a little bit of a weaker outfield. And uh, David Velas really brings that uh, that league ranking up for the uh, for the rotation. But uh, but when he's on, he's on. <clears throat> uh, let's contrast this to Boston. Uh, Boston minus 37 run differential, not a, a promising start to the year, but a positive away record. Now, this is a home game for them. Uh, but four and two on the road so far, uh, and in one run games four and two. So th those are promising signs. Uh, fairly even in right handed pitching matchups. Uh, their pitching staff uh, leaves a little bit to be desired. This is not the greatest rotation. Uh, it is just uh, the first year of uh, a new a uh, a new GM uh, after a whole season of AI. Um, when did we lose? Um, the last Boston GM. It was the early part of 2023 or before 2023. I can't remember. Um, some of the other big names, Orlando Rios, Craig Gnarly have been on the injury list, but Rios should be back this sim. Um, Craig Gnarly should be back in a couple of sims. And uh, that will spell some improvement for the team. Uh, the team has a, a pretty good infield and uh, and some decent pieces in the outfield. Rio Spawner, uh, Ciro Damares, Todd Akber, Doug Uso, a great catcher, and uh, Jason Kronk, a decent closer. It's, don't be fooled by his 838 ERA. He's a four-star closer. Uh, he's got a, an excellent circle change, uh, an excellent slider, and uh, his fastball is already uh, elite, but uh, or at least uh, at, at major league level. Um, and he's definitely working on improving. So, and anytime you get a reliever with this movement and control 60 each, you, you've got a good pitcher there. So I expect uh, big things. And, and you can see from past seasons, I mean, he had a 310 ERA at Montreal. Uh, his ERAs were fairly low in college and uh, um, in the minors. So all good things for Jason Kronk. Uh, what else? Oh, I was going to talk about uh, NCAA Division One. Our NCAA uh, NCAA Division One. They're in the playoffs. Duke Blue Devils uh, facing off against the Oregon State Beavers. Uh, Duke was number one in uh, runs scored, um, a run generating machine. Let's see their season. I don't think they. No, they didn't play OSU in the season. Um, but their season record was, was pretty good. 107 plus 107 for a run differential. Um, yeah, an excellent record, both against lefties and righties 
one run games, they were fairly even, uh, and uh, they only played five extra inning games and broke away roughly even there too. Uh, but uh, just focus on that run differential. They were definitely a run generating team. Uh, Oregon State, eh, not so much with the run generation. They did fairly well on the road. Uh, sorry, at home. Um, not so good um, when they were on the road. And uh, against lefties, they had a positive record, uh, but uh, most of the pitchers they faced were righties and they were uh, break even. So that's the state of the Beavers. So we'll find out the Sim who wins uh, NCAA playoffs. And I just got booped and it didn't cost you anything. All right, so let me go uh, get my water and uh, we'll start a game. Oh, before I start any games, I do have to import. So we'll do that. Import all teams. Scott's yes. Scott turned 49. Happy birthday, buddy. I don't have any cute little sound effects or anything queued up to play a happy birthday for you. So. All right, and I'm back. So yes, yeah, some improvements to the Discord tonight. Sim, you should see game in, uh, game updates in Discord. Hopefully, uh, it doesn't send your notification pings on your phones too uh, too crazy. You can always turn them off. Can't remember how. There's a way to do it. Like in Discord, you can get the darn thing to not ping your phone. It'll send you like email updates or something. I don't know what it does. All right. Just Ohio. They're the only team that didn't export today. Hmm. Check the DFA report. Uh, Seattle and Washington have players with one day left. I'm going to wag my finger, obligatory finger wag. Jim Torts Torelli. I'm um, guessing a demotion. Uh, so I'm not going to release him. Let's see if we can demote him. And Andy Gibbons, third baseman, two-star third baseman, hitting 120. Uh, nobody obviously picked him up off of waivers. Although, I can't seem to... Can I demote him? Yeah. Done. <laughs> Wheels. Cut, cut. 
ask your wife if she's ever seen a kid's show called Fireman Sam. I think it's hilarious because it's the only kid's show, I think it was a BBC thing, the only kid's show I've seen with, with Welsh actors, like everyone's full on got a Welsh accent. It's hilarious. All right. No trades, no trade activity yet. Season's early. People are uh, still chugging away. Oh, that's good. Good for Wales. Who do they play? <laughs> Fireman Sam. I used to watch it with my, my kids. They loved it. All right, Stats Plus is rolling. There are two pending posts. I don't know why they're pending. Why are they pending? <laughs> why can I not see these posts? All right. So it's a portmanteau of two real towns. My manager at uh, work is Welsh. Evans. But uh, he's, he's as Canadian as they come because he's lived here most of his life. He moved here when he was like two. Brin, Brin Evans. All right. Um, so I don't know why it's showing me pending messages for Discord. Maybe that was the glitch. But anyway, once the uh, once the game gets going, we'll see if this works or not. This is our first uh, first Twitch activate or a Twitch first Discord activated uh, stream where we've got. Uh, Stats Plus pushing things out to uh, to the Discord channels, so best of luck. It'll still do Slack as well, so if you don't see anything in Discord, check Slack. You'll get the game updates in Slack still. <clears throat> okay, uh, what game was it? Ma Minneapolis Ravens? No. Uh, Milwaukee Hops, Boston Brawlers. I was playing with the cameras for Boston today. Hopefully it works well. Uh, 10 and 13 Milwaukee hops on the road in Boston against the, the five and 11 Boston brawlers at home. They're five and 11. They do much better on the road. Uh, Ron Bayer pitching for the home team. He is owned to this season with a 785 ERA. Uh, that's a scary ERA, but it is early in the season. Uh, Hiku Inui, uh, which is really odd name to pronounce. With a 1-1 one one record and a 3.06 ERA, much, much saner ERA, but uh, some things that concern most of us about Hiku Anui, and I think why he's no longer on New York, is uh, his low control there. Uh, power pitcher with low control, uh, an excellent plus fastball and plus curveball. His splitter is middle of the road. Um, he's only a borderline starter, but a lot of teams um, have promoted people to starting positions with uh, with week third pitches because there just aren't that many starters. Hopefully this draft takes care of some of that. Um, but anyway, uh, some positives there. He's low greed, high leader, high work ethic. So he, he hustles, he works hard. His last outings uh, have been decent despite his loss against Chicago. He only gave up six hits and three, er three runs, well, only one earned uh, and struck out seven. So that, that's actually a really decent outing. Um, despite the, the five, one loss. So, uh, let's, uh, let's get this game rolling. Good luck to both teams. I don't know if Cody's watching or, uh, Jason Pulsifer's watching, but, oh, certainly didn't fill out their lineups, did they? And both teams exported. So, yeah. Was, uh, was Nolan a, a low control guy in his early years? Cause I seem to remember he was a pretty good control pitcher. In his later years, when he no hit the Blue Jays. 
Oh, Anakin, you're here. Okay. Why is your lineup missing two people? Do you not have a depth chart? I think you should have a depth chart. Oh, Cody's here too. Okay, why is why why are you missing a leadoff guy? All right. Anyway, without further ado, we are at Constitution Stadium in Boston. The concept I had for that stadium, by the way, and I never got to designing it, um, was that because I visited Boston several times, and the USS Constitution is is right by the harbor, and uh, I thought, well, oh, that'd be pretty good. Um, there we go. Now we've got some pitch views, by the way. Um, wait, home plate camera. That's not the home plate camera. Did I? Oh. Okay, so I don't have a pitch camera. And apparently there's no fielders on the right side. Maybe it'll fix that. Anyway, so I'm eating a very delicious Reese's Pieces peanut butter cup. Anyway, the concept was somewhere close to the Charles River, close to the USS Constitution, which lives in Boston. Which, if you didn't know, and I have a feeling most people in this room would know, the USS Constitution is the oldest, actually, sorry, not only the oldest uh, warship, combat ship still in service in the United States Navy, it is also the only current combat ship that has sunk other ships. It's the, uh, the only wooden sailing vessel, uh, combat vessel that's still afloat anywhere, and it's the only one with confirmed uh, confirmed sinkings, confirmed kills. Okay, let's see if this craps out or not. Yeah, we we're oddly missing some some fielders. <laughs> Where are they? Oh, I see what it's done. All right, this is going to be impossible to watch then. When I imported the uh, stadium, I had to remap it to the 3D, and this is why I had to change the like this is why. The camera angles weren't working. I'm like, why are these not working? And that's why. So, that's not going to work. All right. Give me one second while I resolve this issue. Anyway, anyone else got some more um, Navy trivia? Military trivia? While I restart this? Scott was in the Marines. That's kind of Navy. All right. If I can do this quickly, then I'll just reset the the um, the 3D stadium so that uh, it's oriented correctly, and then it'll put all the players in the right position. That's why the uh, the players were all shifted to one side because you're actually looking at the right side players on the left side of the stadium. But we can fix this. We have the technology. Anyone know that movie reference? 
the actor uh, played Snape, but it wasn't to his that character. It was in he was in another movie. Yeah, they called it Old Ironsides. <clears throat> I'm, I'm assuming you know. The, uh, the Americans built their ships out of newer oak. And they double-hulled or double-layered the oak. Um, from my recollection of my history books. So that's why... Um, a lot of the British cannonballs couldn't penetrate the uh, the oak uh, on the on the frigates, and so that led to the nickname "Old Ironsides" because uh, the USS Constitution took hits, but the the hits didn't penetrate. All right, uh, auto adjust the grid to the park. Oh boy, I should have chosen a different camera angle for this. Um, One for home plate. There's home plate. Oh boy. And uh, this is what I was afraid would happen. Now I've lost the entire stadium. All right. <clears throat> Let me try loading this data again. If this does not work, then we may have to just uh, broadcast another game. Because <laughs> I don't want to move the game to another stadium. That's not fair either. Yes. Okay, I am <clears throat> almost done. This is actually working out. <clears throat> so your patience is very much appreciated. What happened? What? <clears throat> Eight battleships, two cruisers, two destroyers. When was it over when the Germans bombed? <laughs> yeah. That was John Belushi, wasn't it? Okay. All right, now I need a, a view where you guys can see the picture. Almost done. All right, this should work now. Crossing my fingers. Bluto. 
That was a great, I remember seeing that movie when I was a kid. It was a great movie. Oops, uh, one second here. Let me just put this on the right screen. No wonder things were hard to see. Okay, back in action here. Apologize for the delay. All right, uh, Milwaukee Hops, Boston Brawlers. This is a good, another good reason why I save just after I do the imports, so I don't have to do the imports again. Uh, everything is is as it should. Wait a minute, Ron Bayer. I'm gonna do the imports again just in case, just in case something happened here. Check team exports. Oh, they're all in. DFA import. Yeah. Okay, that's it's good. We're good. We're good. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, during that whole time, you guys could have actually, uh, you had time to re-export your lines, but that's okay. All right, now let's see if it works. What's our stadium view going to be? Fret not. I should be able to fix this. There we go. And a pitch camera should be home plate camera. Which I just want to double check. Does that work as intended? Whoa, boy. <laughs> Can't see because the catcher's in the way. That's funny. Okay, so I'll have to fix that later. But uh, for now, I'll put it on the main camera. Okay, this is, this is much better. This is tolerable. All right, welcome to the baseball action. Uh, we are in Boston at Constitution Stadium. And uh, we're going to watch the Milwaukee Hops take on the Brawlers. I wish I could get something working. Uh, at least I get the stadium working. <clears throat> Can't get the betting working. Oh, well. Glenn Toraville takes the plate for the Hops. And I know, i got to center this as well. It's not quite centered. Ron Bayer on the mound. If the uh, pitch cam is too distracting, like if we can't see anything, I'm just going to uh, leave it on this camera. We'll see how it goes. Squares the bunt. Wow, Torville with a uh, leadoff bunt attempt. And yeah, the, the catcher being that close... Uh, is kind of in the way. So I'm going to just change the pitch camera back to the main camera. All right. Toraville with the 0-1 <coughs> excuse me, 0 -1 count. Swings, ground ball, and oh, yeah, yo, yo, yo. We got to fix that too. So a uh, single to left for Glenn Toraville, and the action camera is going to have to stay on the main camera. Toraville at first. Terahito Yoshikawa at the plate. And here's Ron Bayer up to uh, to pitch to him. Strike three. Catch some swinging on a splitter. And Mike Sclafani now at the plate. Jesus Cardenas covering Toraville closely at first base. Line drive down the uh, the third baseline into the corner. Rolls into foul territory, but it was a fair ball. And a triple attempt for Sclafani. But he's out at third. Torville scores, however, and it's one nothing for the hops. Off the hop. <clears throat> yeah, it is so hard to uh, to actually get the game to reproduce. I don't even know how to, how they did it to, to get the game to reproduce the, the stadium fans. But yes, I made the stadium um, through a, a we, uh, through a, um, an app called uh, SketchUp. So if you there are some YouTube videos you can watch on how to make a, a, an OTP stadium in SketchUp. Uh, there's like some tutorials. But um, it's it's a two-day process, to, typically. I take, that's how long it takes me. All right, Alex Jeter at the plate. Two away, 3-1 count. 
Draws a walk out of uh, Ron Bayer. And now it'll be Andy Creeps up to the plate. There goes the runner, Jeter, going for the steal. Safe. Second stolen base this year for the DH. Batting fourth. Not, not a lot of uh, cleanup hitters with speed. Stealing bases, but uh, I think we saw one in another broadcast. Andy Creeps at the plate. Full count. Swing and a miss, strike three. Bayer fans him. Second strikeout this inning. And so that's Bayer's line score after one inning and five batters. Two hits, a one earned run, a walk, and two strikeouts. <clears throat> Dale Hansen leading off for the Brawlers. Yeah, when you do your lineups, don't forget to do your lefties. Hiku Inui at the uh, on the mound for the Hops. The right-hander one and one this season with a 3.06 ERA. Despite his loss in his last uh, decision against Chicago, had a great outing <clears throat> and a decisionless outing his last time out. Three-one count draws a walk. Hanson trots down to first. We'll see if he's going to utilize that speed now. Full count to Jonathan Gonzalez. Swats this one. It's a fly ball to shallow center. Toraville charges in, grabs the ball. <clears throat> one out. Hansen stays put at first. Jesus Cardenas at the plate. There goes the runner. Throw to second. Not in time. Hansen with his fourth stolen base this year. Now it's a full count to Cardenas, who sends this one up the middle, running for it and diving as Toraville hits the hard ground, uh, hits the hard ground, hits the ground hard, but uh, manages to hang on to it for an out. <clears throat> Hikunui hammering the bottom half of the zone as well. Ray James at the plate. Line drive to right field, drops in for a base hit in front of Andy Creeps. Hansen goes to third. And with two out, runners in the corners, it'll be Todd Ackber, who's got a bit of a power swing. See if he kind of utilize it here. It's a uh, soft fly ball to sa center field. Toraville makes the grab, and that's the end of the first. So Milwaukee up one nothing. Boston strands two. We'll go to the top of the second, and we'll check the out-of-town scores now. Ohio is hosting New York. We're, by the way, we're done the interleague games for April. Uh, there will be more, I think, almost every month, uh, the way the schedule works out. <clears throat> Ohio hosting New York. They're in the bottom of the second. It's scoreless. Also scoreless in Montreal, where they're hosting the Pitbulls. Minneapolis Ravens up one nothing on Toronto in the bottom of the second. Washington Freedom, so far leading Nevada going into two. It's 2 nothing. No scoring yet in uh, Seattle, Miami. They're in the bottom of the second, and two more games scheduled for later. Houston hosting Arizona at ExxonMobil Oil Field. Uh, we haven't done a broadcast in Houston yet to see that stadium. It is a, uh, a custom stadium again, but this one using the built-in 3D stadium feature. And then Calgary is in California. So Cal and Cal. That game starts at 10.05. <laughs> Arango, so you got Arango pitching. He gave up two runs already? Yeah, in the, f in the first. Well, you got who you got. <clears throat> Electricity now up to the plate for the hops. Here's the 3-1 pitch from Bear. Swung, uh, swung on it, and it's a fly ball to center field just in front of the batter's eye. One out, and here's Chris Zahn. 
Dragging a 198 average to the plate with him. And he slices that one to right field where it's retrieved by Francisco Villarreal. Two away. Ground ball under the glove of Todd Akbar at short, rolling into center field, and Aguilar is at uh, first. Third hit of the uh, game for Milwaukee tonight. Yvonne Aguilar, John Miles at the plate. Miles, the left-handed batting catcher, is hitting 324. He has the second highest batting average in this lineup. <clears throat> And he sends a high fly ball to center field just in front of the Geico sign. But with that catch, the inning is over. Milwaukee strands one. They're still up one nothing. We go to the bottom of the second. Manabu Shiba, the third baseman for the Brawlers, steps up to the plate now. He will lead it off here in the second. He'll be followed by Villarreal and Nicky Pepin. Inouye winds up at the one-two pitch. Swing and a miss. Gets Sheba on a curveball. <clears throat> Just under the zone. And now it'll be Francisco Villarreal's turn to face Inouye. 0-2 pitch. Swing, or no swing, sorry. A uh, called strike three. And now he's got two strikeouts in a row to start off the second. Here's Mickey Pepin. Taps this one to right, and ranging over is Creeps, who makes the catch in that expansive right field. And it's a three-up, three-down inning for Boston. Thursday night looks like we're going to have a uh, sim, but no stream. Um, but we'll be back with a stream Saturday and we'll do a double, double header play by play as Torville grounds to third here. Shiva with the throw across the diamond. One out. Terahito Yoshikawa at the plate. Here's the one oh count. Swats this one. It's uh, a pop up to the infield. <clears throat> Second baseman Mickey Pepin waves off Todd Akber and has the catch. Mike Sclafani steps up to the plate now with two away. Has a hit already today and an RBI. And now he sends a line drive into left field, rolling to the wall, chased down by Gonzalez. It's an extra base hit for Sclafani. Another two-out runner at second scenario. Alex Jeter steps up to the plate. Jeter hitting 288 with a 403 on base percentage, uh, owing partly to his excellent eye. He currently leads the hops in home runs with five, or at least leads the, the current lineup. Hammers this one to right. It's deep. It's carrying. It's back to the track. It's caught by Villarreal. Just short of the wall. And that will strand another base runner for Bo for Milwaukee. Sorry. Go to the bottom of the third. Boston up again. Corazon Mezias, the catcher, flies that ball to right. Where it's retrieved by Andy Creeps. And here's Huku Inui. Slow roller to shortstop. Charged by Aguilar with the toss to first. And he is raced. And here's Jonathan Gonzalez with two away. So far, quite the pitching battle tonight. Weren't really expecting this. Weren't really sure what to expect. Inui covering the bag for that ground ball to first. And Gonzalez is out. Oh, Anui drops it. My apologies. An error on the pitcher, Hiku Anui, covering the bag. Sclafani a little bit uh, upset, chirping it to his pitcher. 
Gonzalez at first. That could have been the end of the inning. Jesus Cardenas now at the plate. There goes the runner. Gonzalez not going to make it, and he is cut down by Miles. The hops catcher. John Miles is now erased. Three of, I believe it said three of 12 would be base thieves. So a 25% runner thrown out percentage. All right, that's what I thought. But uh, since I don't have the whole roster up, I'm assuming that the home run leader would be in the lineup, but... Andy Creeps now lead off, uh, leading off the hops fourth inning, but uh, we're going to check those out-of-town scores as we do on the uh, even-numbered innings. <clears throat> New York, Ohio, 1-1. They're in the top of the fourth, all knotted up there. Nothing, nothing in Montreal. Uh, Chicago's in town there, bottom of the fourth. one nothing still in uh, Toronto, where Minneapolis is in town. Nevada's on the scoreboard in Washington. It's 2-1 for the Freedom. No scoring yet in Miami, where they're hosting Seattle, the Coast to Coast series. Arizona and Houston is underway. They're just in the first pitch, uh, first uh, batter of the first inning. Eddie Patton out on the round for Houston. Teals Ocondo at the plate. Hey, Legacy, how's it going? Bless you. And Calgary and California will be underway at 10.05. Andy creeps back up to the plate. Here's the 2-1 pitch. High fly ball to left field. And it's caught by Gonzalez. I really think i got to do um, like more of a background for the stadium. It's really tough to do cityscapes and backgrounds um, in SketchUp. I don't know. Uh, i got to do some more research on that. It's hit and miss. I'm still learning the, the product. Electricity at the plate. And I haven't had a lot of time to play with it. Swing and a miss. Strike three to Tricity. A splitter. Just on the outside third of the plate. Ron Bears now rung up three tonight. Twelve on the season. And uh, the further he goes and does that, the lower his ERA gets. Chris is on at the plate. With the full count. Here's the pitch. Popped up in the air. Chasing it back is Todd Akber, and he makes the grab just on the back end of the dirt behind second plate. Or sorry, second base. Bottom of the fourth, after three goose eggs in a row for Milwaukee, they still hold the lead, one nothing after scoring in the first. Jesus Cardenas at the plate. Swung on. Fly ball to center. Hanson, sorry, uh, Toraville charging in to grab that one. A lot of fly balls. A lot of air action tonight. A couple of grounders, but uh, I've noticed mostly fly balls. Ray James now. He's got a base hit earlier today. The only hit for Boston. And he sends this one to the Geico sign. It's going to drop in for an extra base hit just at the base of that Geico sign. And he slides into second. With a double. So James, the only uh, Boston brawler producing tonight so far. And with one out on the board, there's at least a, a glimmer of something getting going here. Todd Akber at the plate. He makes contact. It's a deep drive to right, back to the fence. It's a home run. Creeps is not catching that one. In fact, it looked like he went through the fence to try to get it. But Boston takes the lead with a swing of the bat. Todd Akber's second home run of the season has made it 2-1. That is his 25th career home run. Manabu Shiba now. That one was right down the, the pipe to a, a big fat pitch right in the middle of the zone. Akbar made, uh, made Hiku Inui a pay for that one. 2-2 two -two count to Shiba. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And that'll end the inning. No. My apologies. That's only out number two. 
It updates the stats down here after the batter, after the next batter, but it updates up everything up here pretty much in real time, and I keep forgetting that. Two away for Francisco Villarreal. Two one pitch. Knocks this one on the ground. Hard hit grounder to short. Aguilar recoils and retrieves it, throws the first, and gets it. Brawlers take the lead 2 1 here in the fourth. Still a very close game. We're going to the top of the fifth. Yvonne Aguilar will lead off the fifth for Milwaukee, hitting 191. He is the lowest batting average in the lineup tonight. <clears throat> he is definitely a defensive star, but not an offensive star. 2 1 count. Bayer Wines delivers. Drops a base hit in front of Hansen. And Aguilar will improve his batting average to 208. So he is now no longer the worst hitter in the lineup. That honor belongs to Chris Zahn. Here's John Miles. 2 2 pitch. This one gets away from Mezias back to the backstop. And that gives Aguilar a perfect opportunity to head down to second base. It's a full count. Swung on, ground ball up the middle, bouncing into center field. Hansen throws it home. Aguilar's coming all the way around. He scores the tying run for Milwaukee on that Miles single. Miles was able to get the second on that throw from Hansen, so it'll still score as a single. Occupying second on the throw. OTT. Glenn Toraville now. As we return to the top of the hops lineup, a bunt down towards first. Charging it is Cardenas. The throw to uh, Pepin covering the bag gets it. But the work is done and Miles goes to third. The infield shifted to the left and playing in for the pull hitting Terahito Yoshikawa. A virtual wall on the left side of the, of the, the, uh, the field with five defenders to the left side of Ron Bear, as is seen from the, this perspective. <clears throat> Just two defenders on the right. <clears throat> Here's the 2-0 pitch from Bear, and it's right between the shortstop and second baseman. No chance for Todd Akper to make a grab, and Miles scores easily on the Oshikawa single. 3-2 now as the Hops retake the lead. Now we're see, seeing the bats warm up a bit here in the mid-game. Mike Splafani at the plate. He's two for two tonight. Out of these seven Milwaukee hits. And Yoshikawa at, the, at first base represents a potential second RBI for Sclafani. 2-1 pitch. Taken to right field, it drops in for a base hit in front of Villarreal, and that's going to be a single that gets Yoshikawa all the way to third as Villarreal tries to throw him out but can't get there. One out, runners in the corners. Alex Jeter now. 1 2 pitch. Another one to right field. This one diving for it is Villarreal who makes the catch. But Yoshikawa easily tags up with no throw as uh, Villarreal had to dive to, to make the out. But had it got past him, that would have been even worse with Sclafani potentially scoring or at least getting into scoring position and with only one out. But now there are two outs. They've given up the run in the short term, but this may have saved the brawlers from worse embarrassment. <clears throat> it's 4-2. Two outs on the board. Sclafani at first creeps at the plate. 3-2 pitch. Up in the air to right. Charging in as Villarreal makes the catch. And that was a low. A 9-hit, 10-hit, 10-pitch uh, rather uh, at bat on Ron Bear. And uh, they're really working the counts now. I'm not sure if we'll see Ron back next inning. Bottom of the fifth, Boston now has two runs to answer with, or two an answer for. Nicky Pepin, the second baseman, will try to get something going. 
Here's the 2-0 count. Swung on, line drive, drops into center field in front of Glenn Toraville. It's a base hit. Toraville, an off-season signing, perhaps. Uh, last played in 2022 for St. Petersburg. He only played two games there. He was a waiver claim in December. And he was claimed from Arizona. Arizona had him as a waiver claim from St. Pete's last November. Uh, but then he proceeded to injure his uh, PCL on his knee, his posterior cruciate ligament, and was out for nine months. He missed the entire 2023 season. And hence the waiver. But, whoa, hold on a second. Let me go back there. Glenn Toraville, our center fielder. I just noticed a whole whack of leadoff home runs. Leadoff home run against Halifax, San, San Antonio, Milwaukee, and the Brampton Longhorns. That's three leadoff home runs, four leadoff home runs in two seasons of AAA, uh, as well as some walk-off uh, hits. So he definitely has some potential to be a game changer, a clutch player, so to speak. And patrolling center field now for the hops. And this pitch gets away from Miles. Second wild pitch tonight. I think that's the second one on Nui as well. He was also responsible for uh, the Milwaukee error. Pepin goes to second. It's a 1-1 count now to Corazon Mezias. Taps a pop-up to foul territory in the left side, and it's retrieved by Yoshikawa for out number one. And now it's Dale Hansen at the plate. Hansen's 0 for 1 tonight. 25 at-bats this season. Uh, I think he's a fill-in. He must be filling in. Was Brian Bonner the normal starter in center field? Possibly. But here he is, Dale Hansen, 3-2 pitch. Oh, no, they've, that's right. Boston has an injury. I'm wondering if it's to center fielder. Fly ball to left field. Hansen's away. And with two outs on the board and a runner in scoring position, it's Jonathan Gonzalez, who is the tying run. But so far, Inouye is controlling this Boston lineup quite well. He gives up a walk to Gonzalez. And now Jesus Cardenas is at the plate. So things are interesting now. The go-ahead run at the plate, tying run at first. Here's the 1-2 pitch from Hiku. Line drive to left field. It's going to stay down for a base hit. And Pepin comes around all the way home to score. And that will close the gap to 4-3. Gonzalez stays put at second. Cardenas with an RBI single is at first. Ray James, two out, two on. Here's the pitch. He goes up the middle and Toraville moving over in time. Puts the glove on it and will end the inning. But Boston gets one to slice it into that lead. It's 4-3 as we go to the top of the six. And we'll check the scores from around the league once again. <clears throat> Ohio now the big lead over New York. It's 4-1. They're going into the seventh. Primaticcio pitching for the Oxen is having a fantastic game. He's second top performance of the night. Uh, six innings, four hits allowed, one run, two walks, two strikeouts. The only one better is Nelson Silvrio, who is also six innings, four hits, one run. One walk, three strikeouts in his th uh, effort. So far, a 3-1 uh, lead over Chicago. They're in the bottom of the sixth. Toronto and Minneapolis all tied up at two apiece. They're in the bottom of the sixth as well. Knuckles Malone on the mound for the Ravens, the former Toronto Nomad number one rotation guy. Uh, it's five innings under his belt tonight. Two earned runs, three walks, three strikeouts. He's not been as uh, strikeouty as, as uh, and that's a word I just made up, uh, as he has been in the past. 
Uh, Washington and Nevada, 3-3. Three and three. And yes, Avery has 13 home runs for Nevada. That has to be a, a league lead. I don't have the stats in front of me. Perhaps, uh, Jimbo, you can look that up. And uh, Yang with his ninth. TK Yang just hit a solo shot too. So Nevada with some heavy scoring there in the top of the sixth. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, an interesting ball game there. All new ball game there as it's tied up at three apiece in the top of the six. Seattle, Miami tied up at one apiece. Arizona leading Houston in the top of the fourth, just one nothing. And Calgary, California not yet underway. Back to the game action here in Boston. Helena Lopaka is going to come in to pitch now for the Brawlers. This left-handed, hard-throwing relief pitcher is 1-0 in the season. He's got 13 strikeouts in 11 and a third innings. Seven walks, 10 earned runs for a 7.94 ERA. And he's facing Alec Tricity for the first time tonight. Tricity's 0 for 2. Here's the 1-1 pitch, a slow ground ball in front of Mezias and home plate who picks it up off the grass and throws out the base runner at first quite handily. Here's Chris is on. Also over two tonight, Lopaka winds up, sends the pitch in. It's back to Lopaka. Here's the throw to first, two away. Yvonne Aguilar now who improved his batting average tonight. He's two for two at the plate. He's now hitting 208. Started the game off the worst hitter in the lineup. Ground ball to short. And for the first time tonight, Aguilar doesn't reach base. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for the Hops. Still holding the lead 4-3. Todd Akber from Boston, the only player with a home run tonight. Back up to the plate to start things off here in the bottom of the six for Boston. He'll be followed by Sheba and Villarreal. One zero count on the shortstop. Slices a line drive into the glove of first baseman Sclafani, who is able to make the catch, and Akbar is out. Here's Manabu Sheba. The three one pitch. No swing. It's taken for a ball four as it was inside. <clears throat> Sheba picks up a base on balls. Third walk given up tonight by Hiku. His seventh of the season. Almost half of them given up. Uh, half his season walks given up tonight. Villarreal at the plate. 1-0 count. High fly ball to left. And Zanon has a bead on it. Makes the catch. And that's two way Sheba stays put at first. All right, 2-1 pitch, Mickey Pepin. Hard hit line drive to left field, and Zahn is over to grab it, quickly throwing to third to head off Sheba, who takes second base. But there are now two base runners. Boston has the tying run at second, the go-ahead run at first. Corzan Mezias at the plate. Here's the 2-0 count. Hiku Inouye, by the way, 106 pitches in. And it's a base hit through the right side. A seeing eye single into right field. Sheba slides home. He's safe. And he has tied the ball game at four apiece on a Corazon Mezia single to right field. Legacy with the scoreboard redemption. I will get to that right after this out. We did check the scoreboard at the beginning of the sixth, but I'll check it again for you, buddy. 1-1 one, one pitch to Dale Hansen. And it's a slow roller to deep second where it's retrieved by electricity, thrown to first, and that is the end of the inning. But the Brawlers tie the ball game on that Corazon Mezias single. And it's four apiece as we go to the top of the seventh. And here's your scoreboard check, Legacy. Ohio now leading New York 6-1 to one in the bottom of the seventh. That should make Dylan quite happy. He didn't even export today. He was the only GM not to export. Montreal leading Chicago still, but Chicago's uh, got another run on the board. It's 3-2 in the bottom of the seventh. 
Still tied up at two apiece in Toronto, where uh, they're hosting the Ravens. Still 3-3 in Washington. Nevada's in town there. Miami and Seattle knotted up at one apiece. And Arizona-Houston is uh, 1-1. Houston was... uh, um, was scoreless, but Chris Pratt singled in the fourth, scoring Dan Log. So it's 1 1. Back to Boston action. Top of the seventh, Palena Lopaka, still pitching for the Brawlers, came in relief last inning, pitched a pretty decent 1 uh, 2 3 inning. And he'll face John Miles. One for two tonight with an RBI. Here's a full count pitch to Miles. Misses wide for ball four. Lopaka walks his first batter tonight. Number eight on the season. Manabu Shiba moves in to cover the line, the third baseline. Corners playing in with the runner on. Glenn Toraville. Squares the bunt, and it's in front of the plate. The throw goes to first to get Toraville. It's a perfectly executed sack hit as Miles goes to second, unchecked. One out, Terahiro Yoshikawa. I noticed a lot of teams using that sack hit strategy. I'm not sure if I've set my settings to use it, but uh, a lot of the streamed games have, have been using it. It's a debatable strategy. It's it's one of the more controversial ones in baseball. That and the hit and run. Ground ball to third. Throw to first in time. Two out. Mike Sclafani steps back up. Here's the 0-2 count. Hard hit ground or uh, line drive to left field. Bounces in front of Gonzalez for a base hit. Miles thinks about going home, but uh, Gonzalez was on that quickly. And Gonzalez doesn't have the strongest arm, but Miles is one of the slowest players in the Hops lineup. Wow, nine home runs in the last 12 games. That's that's pretty good. Was Avery player of the week last week? I can't remember. I, I didn't, uh, didn't start the wiki page on players of the week. This would really be the only season we, that we'd have them because you can't really go back through um, the stats and the news reports from previous seasons to figure it out. It's, I mean, you can, but I'm not sure I have complete news reports going that far back. Yeah, that's what I thought. I couldn't remember, but I seem to remember um, vaguely his name came up. So Miles at uh, third, Sclafani at first, Alex Jeter at the plate. Here's the 1-1 pitch from Lopaka, and it's a hard hit line drive to right field. It's gone. Just clears the fence. And bounces into the Charles River. A three-run bomb by Alex Jeter. His sixth of the season has just made it 7-4 for Milwaukee. They have reclaimed the lead here after uh, Boston tied it up in the sixth. Close, close game back and forth. And that's going to be the end of Lopaka. Kintaro Sugimura now pitching for Boston to try to put out the fire here. Andy creeps back up to the plate. Two outs on the board. That was a two-out, uh, three-run shot. And, yeah, Jeter reminds me of New York Yankees Jeter with the hits like that. 296 average, six home runs. I mean, he's not in the league lead yet. But uh, Jeter, uh, recall, oh, he's actually not that young. He's 29. I thought he was a bit of a younger fella. He hasn't played a lot of top-level baseball. He spent most of his time in AAA. He was in my organization, uh, slowly, slowly, slowly making his way up. He just never really burst out of his shell. I mean, look at these. Some of these seasons were sub-200. He had uh, 219 with 19 home runs at AAA in 2020. But uh, he just wasn't producing. And then, uh, of course, he leaves the organization. All of a sudden, he's hitting 315. 40 homers at AAA, 43, um, just having a grand old time in uh, in this organization. What, uh, I can't remember the name of the, the AAA team. Windsor, that's it. The Windsor Wild. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, 
he was uh, Alex Jeter was one of the uh, guys on an unaffiliated team with Windsor for the last two seasons. And uh, I quietly, in spring, released those players and uh, collapsed those teams. So the Windsor Wild no longer exist. Yeah, it won't load during the game anyway. Um, <clears throat> but Andy, uh, or Alex Jeter, now playing... Uh, <laughs> Andy Jeter needs to play for New York. I love it. Uh, Andy Jeter, uh, Alex Jeter now playing for the Hops. Andy creeps at the plate. Sugimura pitching. It's a full count, two out. A good pickup by the Hops. Swing and a miss. Strike three on that fastball. 94 miles an hour right through the zone. And it's seventh inning stretch time. We're going to the bottom half of the seventh. And here we are, bottom of the seventh. Hiku Inui still pitching for the Hops. Jonathan Gonzalez batting for Boston. Still hitless tonight. Despite leading the uh, lineup in home runs with four, and tied for the lead in, four, in home runs, or sorry, in RBIs with 14, and having a pretty decent 286 average. Uh, 11 and 26, five home runs, nine RBIs, 423 average, 448 on base percentage, which honestly isn't that much better than his average. His thousand slugging and 1448 OPS. That's uh, definitely worthy of player of the week, uh, I'd say, Jim. So I'm not surprised, Avery. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty decent option. And leading the league in home runs. Gonzalez looks at a 3-2 pitch and looks at it go down the middle. Or go, sorry, just go outside. Uh, wow. I don't know why it says Hawk is a strikeout victim. Uh, but anyway, Gonzalez goes down on a uh, an, a fastball on the outside of the zone that he took and hoped for a walk. Jesus Cardenas now with one away. Line drive past a diving third baseman, Yoshikawa. And Cardenas is at first. Improving his season average to 364 with that last hit. Ray James, two for three tonight. One out, one on. Grounds the second. It's going to be an easy out, and they do get the double play, so that'll end the inning. The Hops, despite their um, fielding glitches tonight, have uh, doubled up on the Brawlers and ended the threat early here in the seventh before it developed into anything. So it's still 7-4 as we go to the top of the eighth. We'll check the scoreboard once again. The hops in the lead. New York adds a run, but it's still 6-3 for Ohio in the top of the ninth. Montreal adds an insurance run for them, but as we know, a two-run lead on Chicago is always in dangerous territory, but uh, currently in the bottom of the eighth, they are leading that game. Bottom of the ninth for Toronto against Minneapolis. It's 2-2. It's like uh, Oscar Gonzalez pitching for Minneapolis. Uh, Knuckles Malone out now. Uh, I imagine he pitched a decent game, but we don't have him on the top performance list. Nevada now leading Washington 6-4 in the top of the eighth. <laughs> it is all up to the, <clears throat> excuse me, it is all up to the bullpen. That is true. Uh, still 1-1 in the Miami-Seattle game. They're going to the ninth. And it's 1-1 one, one against uh, for Houston, Arizona. They're in the top of the fifth. Calgary, California getting underway at 10.05 has not started yet. Roberto Gonzalez of Toronto, the uh, top performance now of the day, just ahead of Alex Jeter, who just hit that three-run home run. Uh, Gonzalez, eight innings, four hits, two runs, one walk, s four strikeouts in his effort against uh, the Ravens. Back to the game action here in Constitution Stadium. Electricity facing off against Sugimura. Alec is 0 for 3 tonight. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Ground ball to second. Throw to first. And it's a routine ground ball. 
triggered by Pepin to Cardenas. And that will put one out on the board. Here's Chris Zahn, also hitless tonight. Swung. Ground ball to third. The long throw across the diamond is in time. Sheba to Cardenas. And now it's Yvonne Aguilar. Hop still sitting pretty with a three-run lead. Sugamura plunks Aguilar. And he'll pick up a base. And now we'll see John Miles with the runner at first and two out. Pitch from Sugamura. And it's swung on, struck, up in the air. Center field has it, and Hanson puts away the inning. <clears throat> Bottom of the eighth, Boston up again. They're still trailing by three. Justin Trimmer now pitching for the hops, giving Hiku Nui the, uh, the tip of the cap. He's done his duty for the night and has given the hops wiggle room as they are leading this game 7-4. Trimmer is 0-1 uh, so far this season with eight, just under nine innings uh, under his belt, 8.2 innings. He's had a strikeout in an inning, allowed nine hits, five earned runs, and five walks for a 5.19 ERA. A hard-throwing right-hander. He's going to face Todd Akber here, who uh, has Boston's only home run. Here's the 0-1 pitch from Trimmer. Slow roller to first, taken to the bag himself by uh, the first baseman, Mike Sclafani. And that'll register one out. Manu Manabu Shiba now up. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Swing and a miss on what looked like an inside fastball. Still in the over the plate, though. And Shiba goes down for three strikeouts. Francisco Villarreal also over three at the plate. 2-2 two -two pitch. Trimmer. Sets him up and sends him down. Another strikeout. Two in a row for Trimmer. And we are into the ninth. Milwaukee wants to add to that lead, but uh, Boston so far hasn't scored more than two runs in an inning. <clears throat> the Hops may be safe. Sugamuro facing Glenn Toraville. That waiver pickup from Arizona. Ground ball to short. Was the throw in time? It was. Akbar looked like he was slow to respond to it, but managed to get the throw to Cardenas in time. One down. Here's Terahito Yoshikawa. Swing and a miss to him. Yoshikawa goes down swinging. Sugamura with his second K of the night. And here's Mike Sclafani now. Four for four at the plate for Mike. Swings low. Missing that fastball. And Sugamura has struck out Sclafani. Switch sides again. Bottom of the ninth. Boston's last kick of the can to tie or win. And it's going to be Mickey Pepin. Followed by Mezias and then Hansen. Not the strongest part of the lineup, if I'm honest. 2-2 pitch from Trimmer. Swatted. It's a fly ball. The shallow center charging in his Toraville makes the catch. One down. Trimmer injured on the play. Uh, throwing that last pitch. And it looks like he might have pulled something in his back. He's coming out of the ball game. It's a bit of a shame. Trimmer looked like he was... Uh, on his way to pitching a great uh, save. Uh, yeah, it's a safe situation. And he already had an inning into it with two strikeouts. No walks, no hits. No runs. But uh, he's going to be replaced by Justin Buck. And now we'll see Buck face off against Mezias. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Mezias tees off. It's towards center. It's deep. It's on the track. Torville there just in front of the flagpole and makes the second out. Dale Hansen now with a 185 average. But a 241 on base percentage. That Even that may not be good enough. 
in this situation, and that's the ball game. A foul territory pop-up retrieved by Yoshikawa, and the Hops have decimated the Brawlers 7-4 to four in Boston. But a back-and-forth game all throughout. Uh, the Hops took an early lead. Boston then retook uh, or took their own lead uh, in the fourth, gave it up in the fifth, uh, struggled to tie it by the end of the sixth, and then the Hops ran away with it with three more in the seventh, making it 7-4. The Hops, seven runs on 10 hits, one error. The Brawlers, four runs, eight hits, no errors. Player of the game was Alex Jeter for his excellent uh, appearance at the plate, a one hit and two at bats, four RBIs. Um, he had three in that uh, home run in the seventh off of Lopaka. He had a, an earlier RBI um, on a was it on a sack fly, I think. Um, plus one walk. The only other home run was uh, Todd Akber, uh, who hit a two-run shot off of Hiku Inui in the fourth inning for Boston. Uh, the winning pitcher was uh, Hiku Inui, who hang on, hung on to win this one. Uh, his second of the season, he gave up four earned runs, three walks, four strikeouts, and eight hits in total. Drops his ERA to 3.65. Ron Baer actually had a decent start until about the fifth inning. Uh, and then things got uh, out of hand for the uh, Boston star starter, uh, fourth, fifth inning. Yeah, uh, no, it was the fifth that really did him in. Uh, Lopaka gets the loss, though, uh, after Boston managed to tie the ball game. Uh, Lopaka drops to one and one. Justin Trimmer was injured pitching, and he's just going to be out for a day, resting his sore back. The 22-year-old should bounce back just fine. All right, let's see if uh, our updates flood into Discord. Or not. Oh dear, where, where are the scores? All games today finished, all right. So where did, yeah, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm a little nervous. So here's the uh, scores, uh, the all finals. Yeah, all the finals for today. Uh, Calgary Inferno with a 7-5 win over the California titles. Uh, Arizona Cowboys beat the Houston Oilers 6-2. It was a four-run 11th inning that did it for the visiting Cowboys. Uh, Oilers unable to answer. Uh, the Storm down the Salts, 5-2. That was extra innings as well. A three-run 13th, so it looked like a big walk-off there. Uh, home runs by Hart and Ramos for Miami. I wonder if that was a walk-off home run. Uh, the Washington Freedom 7-6 winners, another extra inning effort. Uh, it's a close one, though. Speeders dropping that one just with six runs. Washington uh, scoring seven. Avery hits his 13th home run of the uh, season. TK Yang hits his ninth. Either of those players could probably be leading in most other teams right now. And uh, Avery's leading in the league. Uh, the Ohio Oxen hang on to beat the Dragons 6-3. Uh, Nomads went to extras again. Uh, it's the fourth extra inning game uh, today. 3-2 uh, win over the Ravens. Um... We just saw the Brawlers Hops game and the Montreal Metros double up on the Pitbulls 4 2. Chicago now 14 and 9. Montreal 15 and 9. All right, I'm going to save this. It's doing funny things, so I'm going to save it before it does anything else. Otherwise, we've got to resim that. Yeah, I mean, it's a one run game, though, and it's extra innings. Yeah, the pen blew it, but. Uh, that stuff's going to happen. That's baseball. Mind you, I mean, I guess Washington scored twice in the ninth, too, so. All right. Fingers crossed for some uh, Discord updates. Hmm. 
I don't see any game updates. Oh, I had I had hit stop for stats plus because I had to restart the game and I forgot to hit it again. So let's see if it uh, comes up with some Discord posts. Oy, oy, oy. It's just not a uh, glitch-free day, is it? Okay, it looks like it is posting, though. It's posting to Slack. Is it going to post to Discord? It's going, 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 going. Looks like it's posting. Yeah, I see a lot of posts to all the different teams. It's not posting to the final scores or highlights. <clears throat> and I'm not sure why. Uh, but the team channels are getting posts. And I got I got mine. So you guys should have got yours. But uh, maybe those pending posts are the glitch. Okay. Um, where are we? All right, we're going to real-time sim through these. It's uh, Saturday, April 27th. We'll uh, do the April 28th game. We'll end the sim then, uh, advance the 29th, the Monday. We'll get the uh, weekly awards. Maybe Avery's won back-to-back -back, uh, Players of the Week. And uh, then we'll check in on NCAA. They should be wrapped up by now as well. They don't put spring training statistics on bubble gum, bubble gum cards. There you go. Words to live by. All right. Uh, the Brawlers retake a game against the Hops. 7-4. Uh, uh, that's the same score we just saw. Uh, but in reverse, the Pitbulls even up with the Metros. 9-3. It's a big big uh, win there for Chicago. Guio, Guppy with two, and Bins all homering for Chicago. Uh, Earl McPherson for Montreal and uh, Earl McPherson, Jim, we were talking earlier today about the contraction draft uh, after the 2020 season. Earl McPherson was the number one overall pick. You probably recall seeing that name on the spreadsheet I sent you. Um, the Ravens take down the Nomads and even up that series 10-7. Dragons blank the Oxen 3-0 on a five hitter. And so it looks like all four series in the Lake League have evened up uh, to one each. <clears throat> the Metro League, the Speeders take down the Freedom, evening up that series. Avery with another home run. Henri and Yin as well. Uh, it's a 7-2 final there. And it looks like uh, Dan Pratt picks up his third win of the season. Gets player of the game nods. 11-5 uh, win for the Salts over the Storm. Yep, they evened up that series as well. Uh, ooh, looks like Seattle's Dong Kyun Kim <clears throat> with a pair of home runs, his first two of the season. Uh, Perrin and Van Hulsen, uh homering as well. Martin and Tosnia go uh, long for Miami. And the Cowboys down the Oilers, 11-9. They'll uh, take that series. Uh, Oilers have one more to, to avoid the sweep. And the Inferno take down the title, 6-5. That one went to extra innings as well. So the titles now... Uh, we'll try to avoid a sweep in game three. Omar Little picks up a uh, player of the game there. All right. And we'll move on to Sunday. And we'll hit the old quick sim button here. Hops down the Brawlers, 10-5. They take that rubber match. Uh, and the Pitbulls take the rubber match against the Metros, 3-1. Ravens decide the series against the Nomads, 9-3. Uh, Ryba with a home run, though, for Toronto. Uh, that makes me happy. Kimbro with his fourth win for the Ravens. Dragons defeat the Oxen, 3-2. They'll take that series as well. And so... Uh, um, Oxen fall to 12 and 12. The uh, Metro League games, Miami beats the Salt 3-2. That one in 12 innings. John Hart with a pair of home runs. He's now up to 11. He's given uh, Avery a run for his money. 
Uh, the Washington Freedom take down the Speeders big time. 8-1 was the final there. All Washington on the home run board. Anima, Renouf, and two by Ted Mirren. Um, Al Moda picks up a loss there, and uh, that's uh, one of their better pitchers. So that's um, that's a dreadful, dreadful game. Must not have been his... Uh, it was his loss because he gave up the two runs, but I don't think he gave up the sixth in the seventh. He must have been out by then. Uh, the titles avoid a sweep against Calgary. They win this one 6-3. Uh, Katai Kitagawa with his second long bomb for um, Calgary. And the Cowboys sweep the Oilers 8-3. Ouch. That's a tough, tough uh, start to the uh, year for Houston. I think that extends their losing streak to nine games. Uh, but we'll check that in a minute. All right, we'll move to the Monday. So you guys can get your Discord updates. And I'm not sure, is Discord, uh, is it linking to the... Uh, do, 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 is it linking to the uh, box scores properly? looks like it might be yeah it's linking to the yeah that's great wunderbar but none of the uh final scores uh coming in it's a bit of a shame all right so at least you're getting your scores in your channels why uh testament calgary none of the scores came in for calgary calgary your scores didn't come in in the discord channel have to figure out why still still some setup glitches uh we're not ready to drop slack yet this is just a beta test and as you can see there's some glitches um so yeah there we'll have to see how that goes but uh discord is promising more people are using discord these days anyway it seems to be more popular um but uh a lot like the draft for example when we do the draft in stats plus on the website it only talks to slack so it'll you'll get all your messages telling you when to when it's your pick in slack they haven't updated that yet to discord hopefully they do soon okay so uh here are the standings uh after week four now uh we have uh, the nomads in first in the ll east 16 and 10 uh, one game ahead of the Metros, both teams on two game losing streaks, uh, but uh, my Nomads seven and three in their last 10, I'm liking it. Dragons and Brawlers rounding out the rest of that division. Chicago Pitbulls still on top of the West. Ohio Oxen falling a couple uh, games behind. They're now three and a half behind Chicago, 12 and 12. Ravens and Hops rounding out that division, but uh, both teams doing fairly well in recent games. Over the Metro League, the Inferno still on top of the East and with a 500 record, they're the only team uh, to break even in that division. Uh, they are one game ahead against uh, ahead of the Miami Storm. The Houston Oilers have extended their losing streak to nine games. Indeed, they are nine and 14 and falling quickly. Um, <clears throat> one more loss and they'll be tied in the standings games behind part uh, with Washington Freedom. The Freedom are nine and 16. Uh, the Arizona Cowboys on top of the ML West. They have unseated the Seattle Salts. And the Salts are a game and a half behind the Cowboys on a four-game winning streak. Speeders and titles not far behind them. That's the state of the league right now. We're going to check the NCAA, though. I did promise I would check the playoffs there and the Duke Blue Devils have won the College World Series. Congratulations, any Duke fans here? Um, Blue Devils win that one. 2 1 over the Oregon State Beavers. Uh, was there any really doubt? Was there ever going to be any doubts there? I mean, Duke did have the better, uh, the better record. They had more runs scored. Uh, they had less runs against. They had a better road record. Yeah, they, everything was, was in their favor. Oh, sorry, a better. Better home record, or sorry, road. Yeah, better road record, about the same at home. So that was the uh, College World Series. Uh, 
fake OSU did win the uh, first game. Yeah, I still think there's no doubt. Duke, Duke was the better, the better team. All right, uh, back to uh, here. Let's check the news reports. Let's see who won uh, Player of the Week. Uh, oh, Avery was on a hitting streak. I didn't realize that. Uh, Cletus Avery snapped his hitting streak at 22 games. Um, not enough to qualify on the uh, on the wiki. We, we only report uh, on the chart uh, streaks of 25 or more. But he's having a great season nonetheless. Um, John Hart gets the Player of the Week, though, for the Miami Storm in the Metro League. He went 435. Uh, at the plate with six home runs, 10 RBIs, and seven runs scored. And in the Lake League, it was Jeremy Pastore of the Ravens, who was uh, 435 at the plate, three homers, six RBIs, seven runs scored. Another streak came to an end. It was uh, Florian Leroy of Ohio. He ended a hitting streak at 22 games. Uh, and that was a... Uh, 3-0 shutout. And we have some updates for the Sharky watch. We have the, the Dave Sharky watch. And indeed, Chicago did sign him. $17.7 million a year over eight years. <laughs> um, yeah. That's huge for a guy who's rated three stars uh, with no playing history. Oh, that's right, because he was uh, he came in as a uh, international free agent, an independent free agent. So an eight-year, one hundred forty-two million deal for Chicago. <clears throat> uh, after Addy, <laughs> Scott's just trying to ruin my life. Uh, well overpaid. Yeah, I mean, he's great at avoiding strikeouts. He's pretty good contact, but um, yeah, well overpaid, especially for a kid from Brockville. <laughs> I wouldn't pay anyone from Brockville that kind of money. But anyway, uh, congrats, Scott, on that acquisition. Um, what else do we have? Eddie Patton out of the Oilers out for the season. Do we get that? Uh, was that the during this sim? 29, 28, 27, 20, Yeah, so this the, that was uh, the first day of the sim, first game day of the sim. So Eddie Patton out, starting pitcher for the Oilers gone for the season. He hadn't been doing that well anyway. He was 0-2 with an 888 uh, ERA. But he is gone with a uh, rotator cuff. That's a bad one. Yeah, mediocre defense too for a uh, second baseman. Scott never really pays a whole lot of attention to uh, defense though. Um, he's usually looking for guys with, with contact and on base kind of stuff. Uh, do, 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 do. yeah, I think that's it. Ian and Bernard fighting. I think we reported that already. Now, uh, Rodriguez, is he still on his hitting streak? Hold on. I got to go back to the standings here. Ricardo Rodriguez hitting streak. He is. So Houston's Ricardo Rodriguez, despite, despite the fact that the Oilers have dropped nine games in a row, uh, he's got a personal, um, stat that's quite impressive. And that's a 29 game hitting streak that will make the chart on the wiki and it's still active. So we'll see uh, where, where he takes that one. It's good luck to Ricardo Rodriguez and good luck to Houston. I hope they turn things around. Nobody wants to be C and team on a nine game losing streak and uh, least of all Brandon, the GM and uh, hopefully they can turn things around and, and uh, at least snap that losing streak. All right. So that's all I got for you guys tonight. Um, I'm glad Discord work, worked partially. I'm going to check to see what the glitch is and upgrade it to the most recent uh, beta. Because um, uh, those stats, sh the finals should have posted in a uh, team channel I made called Game Final Scores. And the uh, highlights and injuries should have posted as well in the appropriate channels. And, uh, and they did not. And so I'm a little bit uh, perturbed. And I'm wondering if I had to invite invite the app into it or something stats plus bot they're they're public rooms anyway so stats plus should have posted here but potentially i didn't set the uh, settings correctly for this uh, for these channels uh, that's always a possibility 
they may not have permission to send messages. That's probably what it is. Yeah, yeah, that's probably what it is. It's a permissions issue, so that's my fault. Uh, I don't know if it's going to fix that. Uh, me just um, fixing it right now. Bots, no. Stats plus bot. Stats plus bot needs permission to do everything. If I set as permissions, then that should fix things. But I don't know if it's going to work right now. Uh, but you never know. No, don't think so. All right, so that should work for uh, the next stream, though, uh, which will be, again, Saturday. Uh, we're taking a stream night off Thursday, but I will sim. So there will be a sim on Thursday. Get your league file, your team files in by tomorrow if you can, um, or at least by noon on Thursday. And I'll post a message in Discord and in Slack in case uh, some of you aren't in Discord yet. I know Ohio, Dylan's not in Discord yet, so I don't know what the glitch is there. But if anyone else watching is not in the Discord yet, type in um, exclamation mark Discord, you'll get the link, and you can come join us in Discord. Uh, which is eventually where we're going to be migrating to. All right, thanks again for joining us tonight, and I'll just check to see if anyone's doing baseball. Uh, it doesn't look like anyone's doing it out of the park except for us. Oh, we got uh, Spore doing the show. Uh, MLB the show. Yeah, I don't think there's much. We're not going to do a raid tonight, I think. But... Um, but thanks again for joining us, guys. And as always, uh, enjoy having the the banter in the uh, chat. Uh, actually, I'd like to know who the top top chatters are anyway. Uh, I'm sure it's on the list somewhere. Who are the top chatters? I have to check from the, the main screen. I can't see it from here. Uh, but anyway... Uh, thanks again, and uh, until next time, that's Bull Baseball.